Well, and thanks for being part of the program tonight. I am Omini Uden. Since 2015, the empowerment of Nigerian youth has become a cardinal objective of the federal government. This informed many programs of the federal government on youth empowerment, providing several opportunities where the youth, including the unemployed, vulnerable, and can seize public opportunity to source fund facilities, train to help themselves. There is the National Youth Investment Fund, Empower, among others, that runs in billions of Naira for youth empowerment and uh, various skills and other capacity building platforms. Just recently, the federal government, in an effort to expand more opportunities and to consolidate on the various programs, President Muhammad Buhari relaunched the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, established in 1992 or mainstreaming the rural communities in agricultural production and to active partic participants in agriculture for business. The president has well flagged off the National Young Farmer Scheme, designed to engage, encourage, and attract Nigerians, especially the youths, into the full value chain of agribusiness with 1,000 direct participants in each local government area of the country on NALDA projects automatically translates to 774,000 jobs within 774 local government areas in the country. Government has demonstrated extreme commitment, not only in job creation, but making the nation set to revive the national economy. Already, the government is working tirelessly to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years. Tonight on the program, we shall be focusing on the Federal Government Youth Empowerment Program. But first, this background report put together by Musa Baba Aliu. Crop cultivation has gone beyond cutlass and hoes, not only in Nigeria, but across Africa, just as the demand and supply of food have gone beyond peasant farmers. This is equal to the steady increase of population globally that has resulted into high demand for food. In Nigeria, the use of hoe and cutlass is not the concern, but the domination of the aged in agricultural activities, who are not only weak now, but lack knowledge of modern farming techniques. And the youth that constitutes about 60% of the population have little or no interest in farming, as they perceive farming as a job for the low class, illiterate, and rural people. So I am advising Nigeria to go into training of youth. Training of youth, I repeat. We train them, know the benefit of agri before they can go into it. If you don't tell them the benefit of agri, they won't know the value of agri. A lot of them are willing to go into it, but there's no fund. A lot of them, maybe they have access to little fund, but they don't even know it very well. Whatever you don't know well, don't go into it. The federal government has, over the years, introduced programs and policies to stimulate youth's interest in agriculture, an effort that has been hindered by challenges associated with access to land, finance and market, among others. The agricultural diversification policy of the present administration is gradually changing the perception of youths. They now have access to finance through the central bank to improve productivity. The financial support covers 13 agricultural produce as well as processing and marketing. Once they've attended the training and they graduate from the training, we should make available to them the kits with which they can go into the world and begin to make money for themselves and for their family. So this is an opportunity for us to say that even those who are weak, even those who are vulnerable, they can also access bank loans for them to continue their life, feed their family, live a gainful life, employ themselves, and indeed also employ other. Land clearing and empowerment is another initiative introduced by government to allow young men and women have access to at least a plot of land for crop production. Expectation that the scheme will take in young Nigerian graduates and non-graduates alike and be part of this government's effort to reduce unemployment and contribute to the regeneration of agriculture and our economy. 
In addition to this, Green Imperative Project is another federal government initiative that will provide heavy-duty equipment for youths with interest in farming and livestock production. With all these initiatives, agriculturists advise youths, including civil servants, to take it as a challenge to key into at least one out of the many agricultural programs of the federal government. Nabuja, Musa Baba Aliyu. tonight and once again is federal government youth empowerment programs it's still alive at some point our lines will be open and when we are true to you please turn down the volume of the television set and go to the point no need to read my role also on the program tonight become part of the conversation through our twitter handle at tuesday live nta we have a guest dotting the landscape of the country, some Zoom and some on physical set here. Our very first guest is yet to arrive, the Executive Secretary, National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, Prince Paul Ikone. We expect him soon to be on the program. He's focal on his agency. Tonight, we also have a beneficiary of the Federal Government Youth Empowerment Program right here with me, Christopher Kadiri. Good to have you on the program tonight. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Also tonight is the National Coordinator, Green Imperative and Senior Special Assistant to the President, Dr. Andrew Kwasari. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Degree is Professor Abba Gambo. I hear he will link up with us very soon. And also, we're expecting uh, a Zoom guest too via in Abuja, Dr. Steve Ogedan. Well, let's begin. Let me go straight to Dr. Andrew Kwasari. What's the update regarding the Green Imperative Program of the federal government? The purpose of the Green Imperative <coughs> is very uh, clear that the federal government of Nigeria wants to um, increase uh, technology penetration, particularly uh, mechanization and agro-processing uh, through the private sector-led initiative of the federal government. This program has been five years in the making and details of it have been carefully uh, uh, planned between Nigeria and Brazil. The, Brazil, the Nigerian government have structured a financial um, uh, a funding arrangement with uh, the Development Bank of Brazil as a central coordinator with the participation of other major banks, ex especially Deutsche Bank, Islamic Development Bank, and many others to make sure that Nigeria accesses loan at 3% and below to finance equipment services and um, uh, trainings into the Nigerian agriculture for the benefits of, to be operated by private sector for the benefits of our uh, farmers. So this uh, plan has a, a, a three components, but mostly it is in kind loan. That means um, we are taking machineries uh, that have been negotiated directly government to government with the original man, uh, uh, manuf uh, equipment manufacturers of Brazil. And these equipments will be used by private sector that will run and provide services for fee uh, for the primary uh, uh, producers, farmers in the primary production, and then uh, value addition closely tied together. This is the first time Nigerian government is doing this and it's the first time also that the Brazilian government is doing uh, such um, uh, financial uh, structuring at this uh, scale. But it is a very good uh, program, first and foremost because it affords the Nigerian government to enable the private sector to function more. Federal government have carefully has carefully reviewed the past pro programs and attempts to mechanize agriculture, which have uh, done a lot, but maybe not in a sustainable way, and have decided, therefore, instead of importing tractors, 
uh, and then giving them out to farmers or managing them, why not enable access to uh, technologies, not only for primary production, but also for value addition, uh, and hand them over to private sector that will run uh, the operations. And the private sector operators will pay back the loan. Once they pay back the loan, the entire center becomes theirs. So in a simplified manner, it is a federal government enabled uh, uh, borrowing but private sector operated. So it has been enabled, enabled in a way that through bilateral negotiation and the weight of the federal government, we are able to structure this loan uh, at an affordable rate, 3% and below, and transferring the same loan at the same rate to our private sector operators through uh, who will benefit from it they are expected also through the training component of the loan, the Brazilian uh, 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 organizations, Embrapa, CETA, F FGV and Co, have formed a, a multiple uh, uh, con consortia that will follow up the implementation together with the Brazilian, with the Nigerian uh, uh, counterparts over five years. So it is a well-structured loan um, and it is for the benefit of the private sector. Slon, you are. Uh, what's the update regarding the value addition component of this initiative? What's the update? The, 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 this is how it is structured. First and foremost, we have uh, two uh, what we call service centers. The, the, the service center type one will basically sell services that support primary production. Service center type two will sell services that will provide a, a, a value addition or processing. And these service centers are, 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 are organized in a way that we have 632 type one service centers and we have 142 type two service centers that are primary, that are basically concerned with value addition, post-harvest, uh, uh, loss mitigation, and, and, and uh, in terms of processing uh, 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 cold um, uh, storage services, logistics, and linkage to market. These are the larger service centers, and there will be one in each senatorial district, and then some states will have more than uh, one per senatorial district, district because of the sheer land size and the primary productivity that come out of these uh, uh, states. So basically, we have it structured that for every three primary uh, production uh, type one service center, there will be one um, um, uh, type two or secondary uh, uh, service center that concerns ourselves with value addition processing what is generated within the three local governments immediately adding values to them such that we, we mitigate or remove completely the challenges with post-harvest losses, the challenges with uh, producing uh, food that are sold uh, across the borders sometimes in their raw form. This will start in our own design the agro-industrialization that Nigeria desires, where we have capacity to grow uh, raw uh, primary uh, foodstuff and then adding value to them, doing intermediary or final processing. But this also will create steady flow of raw material uh, into our industries, beginning with these centers and gravitating towards the big uh, manufacturing uh, uh, companies in the country. So it is all about manufacturing, the type two, it's all about value addition, it's all about manufacturing, and that also from our numbers uh, tend to be where we see the larger job creation and, uh, and economic benefits come into play on this program. So this is carefully designed in, within every local government. It's been, as I said, five years in the making. We have looked at the agroecological zones. We have looked at the major commodities for primary production, therefore situating immediately a processor uh, close by. 
in addition to the existing processes so that we can domesticate the supply chain of raw materials from our uh, 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 smallholder farmers into uh, industrial manufacturing. You are quickly, uh, Christopher Kadiri, you are a beneficiary of one of the federal government's youth empowerment programs in the country. Which of it are you a beneficiary of? Thank you. Um, the NDE uh, National Grid um, Loan Scheme. Okay. What year was this? 2014. Did you need to know somebody or were you given a complimentary card to get benefit from this? No, absolutely no. So what, what are you into? Well, I'm a baker. I'm a baker and um, I'm into bread making. Um, prior to me uh, running the bakery business, uh, I started off from somewhere. I was a staff. I was, a, I was employed by uh, a company that's, that's actually into food processing as well. And so I worked for some years, um, gained the experience, and uh, the idea of starting up my personal business came up, and um, I took it up from there. I started actually with um, pastry making. I had a, a pastry house because that was the major thing I learned from the company I worked. Uh, and uh, I, I was into snacks, doing all sorts of snacks, supplying uh, to my customers who loved them. And um, along the line, the idea of expansion came up. Uh, and uh, luckily for me, or will I say, um, being that there was program, there were programs rolled out by the National Director of Employment, and um, I was informed, and so I applied for the training. I was trained and um, certified, and so. Uh, the idea of getting a uh, loan from federal government came up uh, through the NDE, and so I applied. Which year was this? That was 2014. Okay. And so uh, we were given that, that, um, that facility, and um, from that point, we, we invested in the areas of um, uh, equipment buying, and of course, uh, other things that we needed to do to start up the production of um, bread business because um, it's something that is somewhat business and um, capital intensive. And so we, we started off from there. And um, from snacks making, so we started doing bread. Started doing bread and um, in different sizes. Uh, and um, uh, we give God all the glory and uh, that as it stands today, we we are staying in business. So if I ask you now, you say you're breaking even? Yes, of course. Have you repaid back the loan? Yes, almost done now. Yes, breaking even, of course, because to have been in business for uh, six years now, uh, you know, it's not easy to have been running a business for one, two, three, four, five years, and you're in the sixth year. Certainly, you know that, yes, we, we have... Uh, we have the ability to Just move on. Just for the sake on. of those who may be doubting, <laughs> mm. before you enrolled to benefit from this federal government initiative, yes, sir. what was your qualification? Oh, uh, national diploma. Okay, which area? Uh, computer science. Okay, are you still practicing that or you're just No, to I'm strictly into business now. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Now, so many Nigerians, mm. I can imagine how young you were when you got this uh, uh, a facility from government. That's right. When publications are made for them to enroll, mm. they kind of doubt. What word of advice do you have for them? Oh, well, that's right. Uh, uh, I will want to advise the Nigerian youth not to take um, things for granted. When you are privileged or you are opportune to, to assess um, any facility or any um, to, um, to enroll in any training that will be, uh, develop your skill, you don't, don't shy away, don't move backward, key into it, don't 
don't fix it on speculations. Um, there are things out there we need to key into as, uh, as young people. And a um, person like me, if one, if someone would tell me that I don't need to know anybody to, when I apply for that facility, for me to assess that facility, I, would, I wouldn't have believed it. But uh, sincerely, it was, it was, let me key in, and I did. And um, of course, we, we assessed that facility, and um, here we are today in business. Okay, so la before I, I go to Dr. Kwasari again. That's right. What message do you have for the average Nigerian youth regarding this in terms of white collar job mm. and going into entrepreneurship? Oh, yes. Um, I, 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 I will advise the Nigerian youth to, to maintain or to grow and maintain the attitude of independent. Independent in business, uh, not, not depending on uh, means that are not reliable. Uh, one thing with business doing is that it helps you to have independence, it helps you to reason fine, it enables you to expand mentally, and um, of course, you know, the, it's easier, it's easier to, to, to uh, control a process you built by yourself. Okay, Kadri, I'll come back to you for on, on that perspective. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Dr. Kwasari. Like I told you, we expect two guests via Zoom. As soon as their signals are up, we'll join them. Also, one of the focal areas tonight is the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, focused on the Young Farmers Scheme. We expect the Executive Secretary, Prince Paul Ikone, is here to join us. And we'll focus on that. Quickly to Dr. Kwasari. Dr. Kwasari, listening to Kadiri speak on how he has soared to this level, your database currently, what, is, what does it look like in terms of youth, non-youth ratio participating in your program? First and, first and foremost, we, I, I want to uh, say that the, the, what Kadri uh, said is, is very important. Um, we have noticed that with the youth population growing, uh, Nigeria has no other way out but to try to create as many opportunities as possible for the young people. And I think that is what we are trying to do on our program. We are just uh, a, a, one of the programs of government. We have worked amazingly during this lockdown using young people and I would like to explain this a little bit. Beginning on the 4th of June, we have used young Nigerians under the Empower Agro uh, uh, program scheme, the Empower, the Empower scheme with the agro component to create a database for farmers across all the 774 local governments and in all the words that have farmers. Today we have in excess of 5 million registered farmers with their farmlands all clearly mapped to them, the geo coordinates and everything. And it will uh, surprise you that we have a database that has shifted the, narr the, 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 the narrative that our farmers are aged. Today, when I look at the existing database, over 60 percent are actually people within a very young uh, age population, less than 45 years. So that gives me a lot of hope. We have uh, a, a balance of uh, 39, 39 percent uh, females and um, uh, uh, 61 percent males but overall we have a larger proportion of the database that are young people and this is uh, they all went out to register secondly the people that did the registration to create this very 
a robust database for us for both crop farmers and livestock farmers are all young people. We have deployed in various batches in excess of uh, 35,000 young people created. They've been working out in the field. The federal government pays them for every farm they enumerate tied to a farmer. This database is fundamental for the current uh, programs that are under our uh, 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 management uh, as part of the Federal Ministry of Agricultural Programs, the Agriculture for Food and Jobs for the COVID or the COVID-19 intervention under the Economic Sustainability Plan. But above all, the green imperative, the value of the database we have created today is so important, is so uh, in fact, is so great comp uh, in, 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 in relation to what our mechanization and agro-industrialization uh, pl uh, program with Brazil is going to look like. Prior to this, we had worked three, four years ago with Brazilian government to create that we needed a minimum of 2,000 households or equivalent of 2,000 hectares of land to make a service center profitable at each local government. With this database today, we are able to analyze the registered farmers at what level and to aggregate. So federal government is becoming more prepared to support the private entrepreneurs like the gentleman in the, in the, in the studio when it comes to setting up the service centers. We know now with certainty where the farmer population and the land uh, aggregate land is in every local government at every ward using uh, the, the, the digital footprint of the farm coordinates we have generated. So this, data, this database is so useful and we have already communicated this to the Brazilian government our, uh, in our weekly bilateral meeting uh, and they are so excited that we can sit and tell a, 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 ben a beneficiary to be in um, uh, 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 Anambra or in Yobe, in Katsina, in Adama, that if you are in so so and so local government, this is the location where if this service center is sited, you will have at least 2,000 ready to go customers who will buy services from you. And therefore, it is, this was enabled by the resilience of our young people, the Empower Agro Youth, who were out there. Their training, trainings were all done virtually. They were deployed virtually, and they have gone word by word to register farmers on their farms uh, tied to their farmlands or their uh, poultry pens or their fish uh, ponds or their cattle uh, uh, pens. So this is very important. So the value of the young people, the future of agriculture is in the pool. The federal government is doing the necessary investment to make sure that we create the soft database, in, uh, the soft infrastructure in terms of database that can support the businesses of young people. So for me, I am more confident, honestly, that what federal government has done from June to date in creating this robust database of farmers will go a long way to enable and make sure that the Green Imperative Project is a success, that whoever, whether you are a type 1 service center operator or a type 2 service center operator, we know exactly how government can enable your business to thrive more. And this is uh, exciting to me. One of our guests, a development planner, trainer, and strategist with experience in business and value chain community and rural development expert, Dr. Steve Ogedon, has joined us via Zoom in Abuja. Good to see you on the program tonight. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for having me. You, what are your opening comments regarding the federal government's uh, land development program and also opening a bigger and wider window for youths in the country, in agriculture. Thank you very Thank much. You. As Dr. Handler has pointed out, the federal government has done quite a lot in creating opportunity in agribusiness for youth. But as he has pointed out, these activities take some time to materialize. And 
there's a need for patience with the government to be able to activate and then use the opportunities that have been created for the youth. Nigeria is a population of over 200 million people. Everybody must eat food, and the opportunity within the agri sector is limitless. Given this situation, we need to identify the various value chains within the agricultural sector, and the youth must be able to identify where they want to play. The, it is in the whole system that the farmer will have to be the input supplier, has to be the primary producer, has to be the processor, has to be the transporter. The youth can identify various opportunities within the space and then practice and operate there effectively and efficiently. And this will create opportunity. There is no youth in Nigeria that cannot be accommodated within the agricultural space because the opportunities are limitless. But agriculture is not practiced in the cities. We need to go back to the rural areas. Apart from what Dr. Andrew has pointed out, there's a need for other tiers of government. It is not only the responsibility of the federal government to provide these employment opportunities. The state governments, the local governments, all of them must work hard to make sure they create opportunities for their youth. If the opportunities are in the local governments, they will not be tried, they, they will not be trooping to the cities where there are no land for agriculture. These are my opening comments, and the opportunities are limitless. Thank you very much. you said that uh, the space to accommodate a huge gamut of Nigerian youth in the agriculture sector is huge. Already, Mr. President has said that this whole scheme will engage 1,000 farmers from each of the 774 local government areas, meaning it will create 774,000 direct employment. Now, one other component was that it will spur more youths interest in farming. You said it shouldn't be in the cities, but in the rural farmers. What should be in place so that these youths would choose to practice, engage, and do business at the rural level? Thank you very much. Critical infrastructure is very important. Access road. The newly introduced NALDA is already doing land development, land preparation. And this land development and land preparation is a critical infrastructure that will encourage the youth to be able to stay in the, in the villages. Again, the government is doing quite a lot, especially in electricity. Energy is critical. Nobody can do agricultural processing without adequate energy that will be able to power the industries, that will be able to power the machine. These are already going on with the, with the, with the, with the, with the sales of the discourse and then the business is improving there. Then again, this technology is improving every day. You can, with your cell phone, with your WhatsApp, you can sell your produce, you can produce in, in Bayesa and sell in Sokoto. Then the logistics movement, the, the movement of these goods, again, we need to be strengthening. And then the local governments must cooperate with the state government to be able to reduce indirances to the movement of goods and services across the country. I give you a practical example. During the solar period, rams were moved from Zamfara to Lagos. But you discover that a ram that is sold at 28,000 naira in Zamfara is being sold at 96,000 naira in Lagos. And when we ask the farmers, the, 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 the traders, why are you increasing the prices? He said for every local government, 44 local governments between Zamfara and Lagos, and that each ram they will collect taxes of 1,000 naira. So addressing the issue of multiple taxation, on, and then the free movement of goods, the safe corridor for agricultural produce, we make these youths to be encouraged to, to, to do the agriculture in the, in the rural area, transport them to the urban area, then the, the movement of goods and services will be encouraged. We need critical infrastructure. We need support infrastructure. We need access to finance, which is already being done, as you can see from the gentleman, and then training them alone. It's not enough. When you train them, empower them, give them the kit. This is what the federal government has been doing. And you see, federal government can only demonstrate what can be done. The state government are more closer to the people. 37 of them, 774 local government. If everybody should do their own part of the job very well, honestly, Nigeria will be food secured, and then the youth will get employment. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Decentralization, decentralization with emphasis. 
what is that space within what you're doing in terms of your presence at the states and local government areas? Can you, can you, can you, please? Even within what you're doing, the green imperative is presence at the state and local governments. And it's saying that agribusiness agri will not really thrive very well in the cities, but better at the rural areas. So what's your presence like at the state and local government in terms of spread? Very much. So I, 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 I got your, your, your question. So the green, in terms of a decentralized approach, this is what the green imperative, this is how the green imperative is structured. First and foremost, the Nigerian, the federal government does not desire or plans to own and operate any of the service centers. So each service center is independent and is designed to operate at the local government level. So it is fully decentralized in the sense that it is not, Green Imperative is not a, a traditional uh, government program where you have to manage it uh, at federal, state, and local government. No, it is government-enabled, private sector delivered or private sector operated scheme. So every service center is independent, it's a private business entity. So let me use the gentleman in the studio who is a baker. So imagine how he's running his bakery. You can have one million of such bakeries in every nook and corner of Nigeria and you do not need to mention or worry about decentralization. It's a market sustained approach of business. As I tried to explain earlier, what federal government has learned in the past was not to get involved again in running these uh, 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 businesses, but rather create the enabling environment. So let me run you through how a service center will operate. First and foremost, now we have this loan approved at the Federal Executive Council. We have all the paperwork and the offer from the financiers. Federal government has granted, uh, 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 has reinsured this loan through the, uh, the, uh, the Islamic Corporation for uh, um, Insurance of Export Credit. 95% of it has been resold in the insurance market. That creates a loan that is fully secured for the federal government not to be burdened about uh, the, 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 the loan, but above all for the service center operator. The next pro process we have to go through at the central is what we are waiting for with, uh, from the National Assembly, the approval of the borrowing plan, which has all the processes uh, well on the way. Once this is achieved, the federal government will go out on roadshows to explain to entrepreneurs, farmers, that this is a, a private sector-led, federal government-enabled uh, uh, project. At this point, we will require that after full uh, disclosure of what makes a service center type 1 or type 2, Entrepreneurs, cooperatives, individuals, companies will bid to run these service centers. And we have in place processes for transparent and competitive selection. At that point, FGV, which is the think tank of the Brazilian component, will run the selection to make sure we choose the best entrepreneurs from within the local government to run uh, these uh, service centers. Once they emerge, just like the gentleman in the studio, they, it, they will determine what and what makes up the equipment in their service center. That means federal government will not import any equipment, any tractor, any processing plant, whether for making flour or for making sugar or salt or anything. But the service center owner 
will sit and he will have full access to all of the equipment manufacturers that are, have been shortlisted by the Brazilian government in excess of 700 original equipment manufacturers. He has the power as this successful candidate to say, I want tractors from Massey Ferguson rather than John Deere, and I want planters from Kuhn, you know, any name you will mention, he will select within his envelope because there is envelope for type A, type 1, and envelope for type 2. He would say, these are the equipments that are suitable based on the data provided by the work we've done in the past five years. To say, I am going for this and this and this equipment because they are suitable for A, the land in my local government, B, the, 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 the commodities listed for my local government, grains and cereals, tubers, uh, oil seeds, vegetables, uh, dairy, beef, agriculture, whatever, we have in excess of uh, uh, 30 um, uh, commodities. He will now say, I am going for this equipment because I can readily sell services. He runs this service center as his business. Once these equipment arrive, we have also carefully selected assembly plants, at least one in each geopolitical zone, through which assemblage of the tractors and the implements will happen. They will assemble on behalf of the private sector or private or co cooperative group or, 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 or company. Once they take charge, the Brazilian manufacturers will handhold them through trainings and then the Brazilian institutions and our own institutions will work with the farm, with the operators for the next five years. The operators are free to sell services, so they don't need any kind of centralized or decentralized. It's a market driven. So they will go out and sell services to their uh, to the clients, collect uh, uh, money for the services they provide and then they pay back to the Central Bank of Nigeria through their commercial banks. Once they finish paying, they, are, they will receive the certificate of ownership of their service center. It becomes their business forever, which they can transfer to their children, to the generation next. So it is purely a market driven. It doesn't need uh, bureaucracies of uh, 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 central or decentralized management. No, it is enablement. So our own work will remain at federal government generating the data to help the entrepreneur to know where the number of, for instance, the, the, the farmer uh, uh, database for his local government down to world level, the type of commodities, the top five in the local government, how he will structure services and to help him succeed. So government's role is enablement of at scale operation that can only be run through private sector. It will be too cumbersome to manage this process as a government uh, uh, program. So it is a private sector-led, federal government-enabled uh, operation. It now we am told uh, sig signals are through via Zoom to Professor Albert Gambo from the University of Medjugorje. He joins us via Zoom. Good to see you on the program tonight. Thank you very much, sir. It's a pleasure being with you. Graham, let me quickly ask you this first question, judging from Mr. President's speech on the day he relaunched the uh, NALDA Young Farmer Scheme, where we hear the portal is open. He was copiously quoted to say that agriculture remains the backbone of Nigeria's economy, being the largest contributor to the nation's GDP. How do you expand this? very much for having me once again. You know, the truth of the matter is agriculture has always been the major mainstay of the Nigerian economy prior to the exploration of oil at Olebri in 1959, etc. But then things are coming up gradually. And in the last few years, you've seen how the agricultural sector has contributed enormously to the GDP, national GDP. But then let's start from the basics, sir. The statistics available from the National Bureau of Statistics said the present unemployment rate is about 9.76%.
And then by the time you move to the international level organization, they are talking of about 14.2%. That's the national unemployment rate. And then when you go to NERA metrics, they are talking about 27.1% in the second quarter of 2020. So this variation in the statistics that we have will actually affect the data that we are all talking about. But then to be candid, one has to give all the necessary kudos to the federal government for finding agriculture worthy at this point in time. And then the diversification of the economy is very, very important. The price of oil is going. Everybody knows all over the world the price is going down. And even countries that have better reserves than Nigeria are now thinking of how to diversify. So I think the best thing to do at this point in time is to make sure that we mop the teaming youths. Precisely sir, from research available and then from studies available, the average age of a typical Nigerian farmer is about 59 years old. So by the time you go to the farms, most especially in the rural areas, southwest, southeast, northwest, north central, you find that it's only the old people that are on the farms. All the energetic youths that are supposed to do the farm work are not there. And at a recent party with His Excellency, the Vice President, just about two weeks ago, he asked the same question that you just asked me now. And I told him that the policies are noble, and then they are also workable and practicable. But then there is a kind of this disconnect between what the federal government is doing, what the 36 state governments are doing, and what the 774 local government areas are doing. So there has to be a kind of synergy, synergy, effective and efficient synergy, that whatever the federal government says today, it trickles down to the 36 states and the FCT, and within the next 24 hours, it trickles down to all the 774 local government areas. That way it will work. I'll give you an example. The green alternative that was launched during the regime of, uh, during the channel of the immediate past Minister of Agriculture, Chief Aldo Ogbe. So by the time we went as uh, agricultural experts to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture, I was given a copy. I came back to my state. I showed the Commissioner of Agriculture, and he said, Prof, I've seen this document for the very first time in my life. So under such a scenario, the policies are noble. They are workable. And then plenty of research has gone into to make sure that these policies are out. By the time you find the opportunity of talking to somebody like the vice president, and then you hear him speak about youth unemployment, the Uncle Borrowers program, the agricultural policies of the federal government, it will amaze you that they are doing plenty of work to make sure that youths are actually captured into the agricultural value chain. But then where do you leave the hole? I told him that the major problem why the youths are not keen into the agricultural policy is because of the hole. So we have to mechanize, really. We have to mechanize, and then we have to make sure that there is a paradigm shift from the hole that is making the youths to leave the farms to major agricultural inputs. There are so many small-scale agricultural inputs that one can use that will do about 25 different things. It will plow the land, it will apply fertilizer, it will weed, it will plant, it will harvest, it will apply chemicals, etc. A single machine, and it's just like a bike, the kind of bike that you guys have in Abuja with this big volume. You know, it's so fanciful, and then by the time you give the youths, maybe 10 of them, and then you give them 10 hectares that this is your farm, you give them all the necessary inputs, believe me you, honestly, is going to change, definitely. It's really going to change. And uh, quickly, before we take our line of reports, uh, Dr. Ogidon, one of the directives Mr. President gave is uh, to ensure that this Young Farmer Scheme takes off. We have gotten more details, apparently, if the Executive Secretary made it to the program, that is uh, Prince Paul Ikone, maybe join us before the end of the program, is the fact that to ensure that it works and to tie up with uh, the plan to go to generate 1,000 jobs across 774 local government areas in the country is the fact that 
all abandoned Nalda farm estate should be retrieved. Be achieved if apparently the data on ground was completely eroded. Of Nalda assets are, are still there. Some of them are abandoned and some of them have been encroached upon. It is possible with the, with the power of the government to retrieve this asset. Deploying the assets to effective use is the major, is the major need. 1,000 youth per local government is a small number. If the facilities are there, we will get more than 5,000 in some of the local governments, and they will be able to produce more food. The, the, the determination and the political will of the government is there. All we need to do, as my colleague has pointed out, is the need for the, for the other layers of government to support. The hazard of NALDA, they are not in the federal ter capital territory. They are in the local government. And the people encroaching upon them are in the local governments, and they are in the states. The state must support the federal government. There must be a thorough handshake between the state and the local government to be able to okay. give to give resort to, the, to to give the kind of impact that the federal government wants to achieve with this youth employment. Don't forget, we are not just talking about youth employment. We are talking about feeding the country. We are talking about food security. We are, because even with the lockdown of COVID, many of the countries that export food to Nigeria, everybody is stopping the export because everybody wants to feed its own people. If we cannot feed ourselves, and we cannot create employment for the youth, then the situation will be serious. Thank you very much. A couple of reports. We'll take more uh, testimonies from our beneficiary, that talking about Christopher Kadiri, and also take some tweets that have come in, asking questions and clarifications on the core issue. But as we return, we'll take a focus on other aspects of youth empowerment programs in the country. Our first report tonight is coming from Oweri. So, which used to be the mainstay of Nigeria's economy was dealt a serious blow with the discovery of oil in the late 50s as the backbone of the nation's economy was gradually diverted. The situation resulted into a high rate of unemployment among Nigerian youths who drifted from agriculture to seeking white collar jobs. The federal government relaunch of the National Agricultural Land Development Authority is being described as a major boost to a reduction of unemployment, especially among youth. If our, the minds of our youth will be reoriented, telling them that there is you know, profit in agriculture, that agriculture is business, and woo their interest back to agriculture, and move ahead to empower them, position them, I think it will be okay for us in this nation. This agency being relaunched this time around to ensure that at least a thousand youths from each of the 774 local governments in Nigeria are properly engaged in agriculture is a world a healthy development. Experts are of the opinion that logistic assistance should be made available to the farmers for the programs to yield the anticipated results. You have to have capital to buy this. Things. Not everybody can easily buy it. You have to have capital to acquire land. You have to have capital to fence it. You have to have capital to build their farm houses because they are now the farmers have to live in there. From them, if they produce and they sell off. These youth will be encouraged to go into agriculture. Instead of going to look, do Yahoo Yahoo or going to kidnap or going to look for white collar jobs. In Imo State, unemployed youth, according to the project director, National Agricultural Land Development Authority, Imo State Office, Emeka Ugunale, are being effectively engaged in agricultural activities as a means of livelihood. Not only employing or engaging the youth, it's also helping to diversify our economy understand so that's why now that came up and we have been trying to do that in most case in most state has been engaged into it we've embraced it we started training farmers in several different aspects even in crop animal productions encouraging greenhouse farming like this that produces this special species of pepper will go a long way in generating job opportunities for our unemployed use
In faith with the conversation tonight, let's take this word from Kabi State. Is the mainstay of Nigeria's economy with highest contribution to the country. The man who is said to give those testimonies to the beneficiary of one of the federal government programs. And uh, Christopher, listening to all the contributions by the panelists across the platforms, are you encouraged, uh, or will you want to also diversify from just bread production to other aspects? Well, we are very well, very well. Um, uh, it is.
<laughs> oh, well, yeah, you see, bread, as it stands now, what we produce in Nigeria is not even enough for us to consume, not to talk of taking it out, right? We, we have bakers who can produce bread to the highest of standard. And uh, I mean bread that can sell global. But you know what? The demand for bread is high in Nigeria because of the nature of bread. Bread is a staple food, you know. And um, if, if, if we cannot meet the demand of Nigerians, so I don't think we should be thinking of how to export uh, this product. Okay, Katie, we will take you on other areas. Quickly, mm -hmm. when we return, like I said, we veer into into other areas of empowerment programs by the federal government and also some tweets focused at some of our guests. Stay with us. The recent genuine concerns and agitations by Nigerians about the excessive use of force and in some cases, extrajudicial killings and wrongful conduct by means of the Nigerian police force. The disbanding of SARS is only the first step in our commitment to extensive police reform in order to ensure that the primary duty of the police and other law enforcement agencies remains the protection of lives and livelihoods of our people. We will also ensure that all those responsible for misconduct or wrongful acts are brought to justice. We also deeply regret the loss of life of the young men in Ohio State during the recent demonstrations. I have directed that the circumstances of his death should be thoroughly investigated. Meanwhile, it is important to recognize that the vast majority of men and women of the police force are hardworking and diligent in performing their duties. The few bad eggs should not be allowed to tarnish the image and the refutation of the force. These days, people get their news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. You can follow us on all our social media platforms. Facebook at NTA Network News. Instagram at NTA Network. Twitter at NTA News Now. YouTube at NTA News Online. Or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go. Be it on your TV, iPhone laptop or ipad or download the nta mobile application from your play store or app store nta you can beat the rich Issue-oriented innovation talk show. Right, we take a look at the federal government's youth empowerment programs. 
Quickly, Dr. Andrew Kwasari, let me stay on you. A couple of tweets came in while the reports were running, and virtually all the tweets are tailored at you. So I'll take them, then you respond to them quickly. First is coming from Issa Mohammed. He said, Empire is stopped. Why? Ibrahim Abdulatif Adedeji says, I hope all these programs of government of, your, of government are closely monitored because most of them are popular on media houses, but not in reality. We need the actual. The next one says, Mohammed Lawan 07 says, ask Dr. Kwasari if there is any FMAT enumerator that is paid 50% of a complete job done. And last on the series, it says, Mohammed Major says, all FMAT enumerators are completely demoralized because of non-payment of their allowances. How do you react to this? <laughs> Thank you, sir. First of all, let me um, start by um, explaining the gentleman that said NPower has stopped. Why? Initially, in the first outing of the Buhari administration, the NPower uh, program was meant to run for two years per batch. So batch A, batch B have run their full course and have come to an end. However, federal government has not abandoned the, the young people that participated in the NPower program. I am speaking specifically NPower Agro. And that's why even though the, their allowances have naturally stopped in line with their uh, contract with the federal government to receive assistance for 20 Uh, payments under the um, Agriculture for Food and Jobs Scheme uh, of the Economic Sustainability Plan uh, for COVID-19 was clearly communicated to the NPOWER uh, enumerators for federal for FMAD. And this was that you will receive 50% of payment after the first and second validation of the entries. So what does that mean? The youth were trained and they were given the apps to work with. You go out there, farmers must be on their farms. You take their photos and then take the coordinates of their farm and ask them all the questions as designed in the, uh, uh, soft, in the, in the app, as, this, uh, as, as, as formulated in the app. You upload onto the portal, the federal government portal for farmer registration. We will do first level, second level, and third level validation. We have concluded first and second level validation of 3 million farmers out of the 500 plus registered farmers. We have made first and second payment. First payment, uh, uh, I think in total we've paid about uh, half a billion. And the third payment, which will take it to the end of July, is on the process. In fact, it was just minute uh, mistakes, but the enumerators need to understand, first and foremost, I have said this in, in, in many fora, 
that federal government has full budget for your support. So your money is budgeted in the 2020 budget for the enumeration exercise we are doing. Your payments are being done directly from source. So there is nobody who will temper with it. But sometimes there are hitches. Imagine the, your, 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 the payment you are expecting now, about 490 million naira, has to go to thousands of you. You have over, uh, you have one, one, you have one, you have 33 um, uh, uh, PMs, and then in excess of uh, 2,000 supervisors, then the end power interest themselves in excess of 30,000 or 35,000 on this current payment. So we have uploaded and sent all of this and the accounts people have done everything, but they discovered there was a slight uh, mistake. And because this payment is done uh, automatic from the government treasury, they have to return everything again. So I apologize, it takes a single mistake and delay payment, but there is nothing that will happen to your money. So please, uh, you have kept faith with us. You've not, got, you've not gotten demoralized. So you will definitely get paid, please. And this is the same to the second, the third, and the fourth uh, uh, question, being uh, a gentleman that asked question. I can, I can tell you this, that there is no doubt about you getting your money. Remember, we are also going to engage you uh, beginning uh, next week to collect 400,000 soil samples across the world and we have finished the design because you have given us farms at world level so we are going to be communicating with you to determine where and how to collect the soil samples in line with the apps that have been deployed in your uh, on your uh, devices and so work is still ongoing and you will receive all of your payment i am hopeful that by the end of this week you will receive the third badge of payments, and then we will start processing the fourth uh, badge of payments. But your monies are secured. Uh, we have received all of your money, and I can tell you this authoritatively because the Director of Finance and Accounts uh, uh, ha has all the details, and I'm, I'm opportune to know how, how you, that all of your money has been made available to the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development. For that uh, clarification, I believe the tweets, uh, those who send their tweets have gotten the clarification. And quickly, still looking at uh, innovativeness, creativity, and uh, youth engagement in the country. I'll be asking Dr. Steve Guidon and Ogidon and uh, Professor Abba Gambo to respond to this, but begin with Professor Ogi, uh, Dr. Ogidon. Quickly, let's look at the National Youth investment fund. It has to do with creativity, innovativeness and entrepreneurship. If this program subsists for the next four years, where are we looking at the Nigerian youths in terms of inclusivity within the system? You see, Nigerian youths are very creative and there are so many opportunities within the creative sector. The only gap and the only limiting factor has been the access to finance to be able to actualize their creativity. If this innovation of the federal government is sustained for the next three, four, five years, you will see many of these youth becoming employers of labor. You see, one thing with creativity is that the moment you are able to fund it, the moment you are able to actualize it, it will give back to other creativities. And then the youth, because of the way they work together, because of the way they mix with each other, they'll be able to empower one another. And all the government we need to do, and which government is already doing, is just to jumpstart this system and let this youth create, have opportunity to be able to actualize their dreams. And then they'll be able to give happy hand to each other to be able to drive it. We have started on a very good note. And that is why we say the journey of a thousand miles begins with, with the first step. And this is the right, the right step in the right direction. The youth should take this opportunity and actualize the opportunity and use the opportunity to be able to actualize their dreams. And then, given this situation, they will be able to do well and then they will be able to empower themselves and empower others as well. Thank you. Well, the problem now is 
we have this group of youths with all this available. They are still very, very lukewarm and apathetic about it. What advice do you have for them? For this opportunity, they are, they are suffering from limited information. They don't have information. And those who have information are not sharing the information. There's a need for those who have the information to share the information with those who don't have. And then they need to believe in the system that this thing can work. It has worked in other climates. So definitely it can work in Nigeria. And so the technology that we are using so destructively to mobilize, to create support, to create problems, we can use this technology to be able to disseminate information. And this is not the only one. What government is doing is just one leg. Private sector is doing a lot. The foundations are doing a lot. The TY and Human Foundation is working. Tony Elimelu Foundation is working. We've been training youth on this platform of these foundations. And they've been able, many of them have become employers of labor from different countries, from different parts of the world. So Nigerian youth must look inward and look at different windows. We have a thousand and one windows of opportunities for them to be able to actualize their dreams. We can't just sit down alone and continue to expect one big grandfather or father, which is the federal government, to be able to empower everybody. It is a collective dream, inclusivity, as we have pointed out. All of us must be able to come together. This is our country. We must build the country. We must use the opportunity to develop the country, actualize our dream, and continue to move on. Thank you. We'll be going to Professor Gambo, but after this first caller tonight, uh, Sani calling in from Kassina. Hello, Sani. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Hello? We can hear you, Sani. Please go ahead. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, this is a very good initiative. I, I believe if it is uh, well done and uh, fully managed, it will help in alleviating the unemployment in the country. And it is uh, one of the problems that is affecting the youths in this country. My question is this. This government is believed to have so many initiatives like this, but the problem is there were rumors that whenever the government is, you know, has implemented good things like this, you must have somebody from the federal level, whether from the central bank or somewhere, to follow up for you, for you to have access to these things. I, I need this to be clarified, because you know you will apply, but you will see that you cannot be able to have it. Only some few people have the opportunities. What is happening? At least we need explanation to that. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sani from Kassina. At the appropriate time, we'll allow Dr. Kwasari to address that. But let's go to Professor Abba Gambo. Professor Abba Gambo, still on the National Youth Investment Fund, if this fund is dotting the landscape of the entire country in terms of implementation, what role should the states and local government be playing to ensure that it works to the letter? Uh, Professor Gambo's signals dropped, and I believe if Dr. Steve Ogidon heard me, can he respond to this, please? You see, the states and local government have a lot of role to play. As you pointed out earlier, they are closer to the people, and they understand their people, and they understand the opportunities in the area. The opportunities in Bayesa, they are different from opportunities in Lagos. The opportunities in Lagos are different from those of MENA in Niger State. There's a need for us, for the local government, to look inward, use their resources to develop their area, then create opportunities for their youth, create access to market for this youth, and then educate the youth about the opportunities that the federal government, have, the, the federal government has, has put in place. Um, Professor pointed this thing out about the green alternative. The federal government has launched a very good program, but the states are not aware. And the states have long good program, the local governments are not aware. We need adequate information dissemination. We know the country is large, the population is huge, but all of us must be able to do our role, to, to play our role, do our part, then create a seamless handshake between the federal and the state and the local government, and then educate people in our area, educate our youth, so that they will be able to see the hope. The only thing the local government can give these youth is hope. 
Give them the hope of a better tomorrow. Tell them that they know what is going on. Tell them that you know what is going on. And tell them that you are aware that you are building a better future for them. If we are able to do all these things, the youth will see that, oh, our political leaders at lower level, they are really taking care of our interests and they are planning for us. And then it will be able to, they will be able to support them. Thank you very much. Gambo Signal's return, we'll get back to him. Let me, let me take on a Kadi. Kadi, listening to all this, we brought you here so that you, you focus more on talking to Nigerian youths. All these available, you're a beneficiary. A couple of them listening to you, you still have these doubts. Any need for doubts? Well, <clears throat> I don't think there is um, any reason for doubt. Although, you know, um, it is normal, especially um, when you, you, you look at um, what is going on um, with, with um, uh, assessing um, those funds that government have made uh, available for the youth um, um, in Nigeria to uh, develop themselves in terms of um, entrepreneurship and then job creation. Um, you see, I will, I will urge the government, doubt is a personal thing. Uh, it's one thing for you to say something, it's another for that person you're telling to believe. And so you see, it's personal. Uh, um, one thing I will advise the government to do uh, is to is the process of assessing whatever fund that it has made available for a purpose like this. You see, uh, people run out of patience when they have to go through stress to get that thing you think you have given them. When you got yours, did you go through stress? No, I didn't. I didn't. In fact, it was, um, to me, it was a surprise. I got the information of that something was um, available. And uh, a considering that, um, that I have already started the process of setting up a business and, I've, and I was already into it, and uh, I was having that, that, that drive, that, that, um, that force was in me to see how I can um, assess this fund and, of course, um, move my business to, to the next level. And so I applied. So if, if in 2014, when you benefited? Yes. Technology was not as available as it is now. That's right. Do you think then and now it's not even easier now? Yeah, of course it should be easier now. <laughs> but you know what? But you know what? Um, I believe in reality. I believe in reality. I'm speaking here um, knowing that I have benefited from such programs and looking forward to benefit more for further programs. Like I told you, I'm into business, and um, certainly, definitely, I will want to step up my business. I will want to grow more. I want to do more. And which means, for me to grow, I will certainly need funds. I will certainly need more um, assistance. And so what do I do? I, 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 I set my eyes on the, on the look to see where I can assess these things. I be, and what gives me that courage is that um, I've gone through it before, and something came out of it, and I've used it to help myself, help uh, my immediate um, uh, community, um, uh, not just in terms of employment. In one way or the other, I have given scholarship. In one way or the other, I have set up small, small businesses for women around me where I stay, where I do my business. Um, you see, why? I felt... I was helped. So from what the testimony you're giving now, yes. if you're asked to speak to a cluster of Nigerian youths yeah. who are still, who do not believe in this, yeah. what would you tell them? Oh, well, I would tell them with all sincerity and conviction that it works. It works. And that's why I emphasize that as government have got this courage to put this phone on ground, to make them available, the government should try as much as possible and as quickly as possible to make it easy for people to assess it. Because if it has to take stress and a um, long period of time, people get discouraged. 
People believe, ah, no be Nigeria, no be Nigeria. So th that's the mentality. But when you make it easy, <coughs> excuse me, you make it easy and you, and, 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 and you make it quickly, okay. it, it's, 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 it will send a, 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 a quick message to the Nigerian you that um, you as a government said you, kept, you have this and this and this for, for, for the youth. And, um, and um, you can, a youth can key into it and assess it, you know? And so, so let it be self, let it be self, let it be self explanatory. Let it, let people feel it. Okay. Yeah. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Let's go back to Professor Gambo. I will hear Professor Gambo's signals uh, have returned. Professor Gambo, we are looking at the empire, also largely at the National Youth Investment Fund. And uh, just like I asked uh, Dr. Ogidon, in the aspect of promoting entrepreneurship and also creativity, which in turn if it plays out based on the vision of the program, these same youths will end up employing other youths. Like Kadir is saying today, he has 20, 24? 24. 24 employees in this uh, setup from a loan he got from the federal government. So what's the future of the National Youth Investment Fund if it plays out the way it should? Is it all that dumb? That is my question. Thank you very much once again. And may I apologize for the disconnect that we are having from Damatru? I hope I'm clear enough now. But, <laughs> may I apologize for the disconnect that we are having from Damatru? I hope I'm clear enough now. Okay, I, I, you asked three questions that I want to take all the three questions, one after the other, as quickly as possible. Your very first question.
government is actually uh, providing this platform, I think it will, uh, it will reduce unemployment drastically in the country. Then another thing that uh, the government also needs to put into consideration is not just about, you know, uh, signing some of those policies, but it's all about implementation. How far is uh, the state government actually key into uh, some of this policy, uh, laudable policy by the government, uh, federal government of Nigeria. This intervention in a way will caution the effect of uh, unemployment as it's going to provide opportunity. You know, when we, we understand that Nigeria is an agrarian environment where we know that agriculture is one of the key things that can provide job opportunity for young people. And we're not talking about this just agri as just a, a, a small skill level. We're talking about Greek as a value chain business, in agriculture as a business, which we know having young people driving this initiative will we, we, we provide more opportunities, uh, more jobs, more, more uh, products and more services for the citizen. That's there and uh, we now go to Dr. Ogedon to respond to the last issue before asking me a follow-up question. How to disseminate information and how to create awareness for all this lot of program of the government. The traditional media has a lot of role to play. There is a need to create additional awareness. It all belongs to different groups. We belong to post student association, we belong to church group, we belong to most groups. We need to use our space of media to be able to control the narrative and get the information across. Get the information across to the people in our location in our area so that they will be able to get to have the knowledge of what the government is doing and various activities that the various activities that the federal government has put in place to be able to create to be able to create job for themselves and job and and that people's priority. I think it is there is a role for everybody. And it's one of all that you need to do. You can do whatever you want to do. You better get that person now and then fix it. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. In the long run, what long run plan do you have in terms of if the Brazilians withdraw? What's the faith of the scheme? Brazil has gone through the part we had before. There was time they were they were food insecure. And I think it's Dr. Andrew. <laughs> that is, I think they say Dr. Andrew will take it from there. There was time they were food Imperative is a partnership with, between Nigeria and Brazil. Long term plan was the faith of this imperative regarding sustainability. What's the faith of how how do we ensure sustainability? Is your question simply? Is that correct? Okay, if I got you right, sir. I, I think I, ca I can try, and the doctor, you can you can you can fill in if I miss anything. Brazil is a long way from here. Uh, what is the the plan for sustainability? Let me uh, uh, say, just take it from where uh, doctor was trying to explain, that in designing the green imperative, Nigeria considered a, a, a certain factors. One was that we wanted to work with a partner that has similar uh, agroecological situation like our own, which Brazil do does have. Third, uh, second was that we wanted a partner that has done it at a scale. We, want, we didn't want something done uh, uh, for a million people or two million people. We wanted to see something substantially uh, 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 huge uh, that is commensurate to our size. To our size. Third, we wanted to see a, a partner that is willing 
to stay with us all the way. And sustainability for us means that the partner will be there all the way. And fourth and finally, we wanted someone that has created an all-inclusive growth for smallholder and large-scale farmers. So we chose Brazil. And Brazil also, at the time this administration went into this partnership, was running similar programs with other African countries that have uh, 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 practical benefits on the ground. We went and understudied Ghana, Senegal, went to Kenya to see what they've done with similar support from the Brazilian government. But back to sustainability, sir. In the four years that it has taken to finalize this uh, 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 loan with Brazilians, design and total funding, we have come to agree with them that they are here for a long run, a minimum of five years to work and handhold our entrepreneurs, our research institutes, our farmers, through the processes that they have uh, experienced. Brazil revolution in agriculture started with a similar kind of loan from the Japanese government through JICA. What is different is, in the case of Brazil, they went through the hard way. They had to send their people to, to learn and to uh, outrightly try to adopt the technologies without um, uh, permission from their uh, funder, the Japanese government. In our own case, Brazilian government is willing to, they, they even openly told us, this is an opportunity for Nigeria to copy because Nigeria has capacity to begin to make almost all of this equipment. So you will need Brazil on a level of uh, mutual respect. So we are out here with you. And for the first time, sir, in order to entrench sustainability, Nigeria is the first country under the South-South Cooperation, but also in Africa, that Brazil will be selling equipment through their original equipment manufacturers in completely knocked down pieces, CKD, not assembled, because we have proven to them and they have validated through several visits that we have capacity in country to assemble and to gradually begin to manufacture this equipment as we improve our power, we improve our steel pro uh, 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 production and all of that. So they saw that we have these beautiful assembly plants scattered all over this country. Some of them maybe not in full uh, utilization now. And interestingly, in private hands. So when they saw that Nigerian government wanted to do something differently, we wanted to encourage private sector uh, operation. We wanted to uh, scale up the market. They were very interested. So original equipment manufacturers under what they call the Brazilian Association of Agricultural Machine machinery manufacturers, Abimaki, are willing and are hopeful that through this government-enabled transaction, they will find opportunity for long-term relationship with our assembly plans, and they are hopeful that our assembly plans will prove and quickly gain efficiency in assemblage and local manufacturing that they can work with Brazilian companies to export to the other African countries instead of manufacturing in Brazil. And you know that Brazil today buys almost 70% uh, 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 of some of our products in the agricultural sector, particularly urea. The urea produced in Nigeria, 70% of it by Notoria and Co. are sold to the Brazilian farmers. So there are a lot of uh, needs to have this uh, transaction and sustainability for us in this administration is through private sector initiative to lead the, the implementation and to own the businesses. So we have seen in it that A, all of the Brazilian uh, research institute or the major ones, Embrapa, Cheetah, FGB, FGV and Co, are all coordinated to give a five-year hand holding for our assembly plants, our service center operators, our farmers. B, long term to work and manufacture locally. So this is government enablement to start 
a relationship between our private sector and Brazilian private sector. I, 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 I have been around these states and local governments during the assessment and design of this program. And I can tell you, sir, each one of our 774 local government areas can absorb two, three, four service centers. But government is enabling one as a startup. So we will see that once this catches up and the private sector manage the, man, the private sector manages it well, it will be scaled up quickly on the back of separate and independent transaction between Brazilian companies and Nigerian companies. And, 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 and when we talk about sustainability, what could be more sustainable? We saw a young man in, with a bakery that is employing 24 people. That is sustainability, sir. So enabling businesses to, to emerge on, uh, through government support is the surest way to create sustainable job, uh, 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 to, uh, sustainable employment that will pay dignified labor, that will continuously expand the wealth base of this country. It is not very soon, I see, with the type of uh, uh, example we have in the studio today and many more that will come on the back of the green imperative that the Nigerian government will begin to do what other governments are doing make the job creation the business of the private sector and the business of government is to create to, to collect monthly new jobs created and to announce them that is sustainability so I think we're on the right path. And lastly, sir, I want to say also that the smallholder farmers we have here in Nigeria, a similar pattern that Brazil has with what they call family farmers. And they have found a way through programs like this to support the family farmers that have developed distinctly from the large commercial farms that Brazilians are known for. And it might interest you to know that the, 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 the livelihoods, the poverty index in Brazil within the smallholder farmers is not as bad as ours. They found a way by keeping this same group to emerge and to become really prosperous, send their children to school, afford good things of life and live well. So we think that if we follow this pattern, uh, with our, tying it closely with the component on research and uh, technology package transfer, we will come out uh, uh, better as a country. Dr. Kwasiri, thank you so much. We enjoyed your closing thoughts and I'm I must say, it was nice having you on Tuesday Live tonight. To Dr. Gidon, sorry, we, our signals dropped at some point and also Professor Gambo, we thank you so much for being part of the program tonight. And uh, finally here in Abuja, Christopher Kadiri, it was nice having you on the program and we enjoyed your testimony. Thank you. That's it on the program. On behalf of all of us, thank you so much for your tweets, your phone calls, and on behalf of all of us, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.